First of all, what's your reaction to Christchurch Mayor Leanne Dalzell's decision to stand down today? Well, I think it's understandable, and I think Leanne's given a tremendous amount of service to the country and particularly to Christchurch in the last, um, you know, so many years. Um, you know, she's uh, always been a, a really hard worker, taking things um, very seriously and has been a professional. So I wish her well, and I thank her for her service. Let's now discuss the so-called government water reforms. Uh, many of the Canterbury mayors, including Christchurch, Mealy and Dalzell, are a little bit confused as to what the point of it all is. Do you believe it's all about taking away local control into central government hands? Because that's what the South Island mayors are saying in a roundabout way. Well, well, that's exactly what's happening. So it's not only taking control away from local government and putting it into a centralised uh, water system or entity, um, but it's actually it's got the regulator and the um, operator all very much confused in it. So I think there's you know there'll be some bits out of it that we'll think well okay, but it's also about taking half the assets and governance and putting that with iwi um, and for which they haven't paid a cent other than every other ratepayer. Um, so it just seems entirely wrong. And all of this is being done uh, with some of the local councils being paid money to consider it. So some of the smaller ones have told me, yes, they've been paid you know, up to $7 million to spend their time thinking about it and doing other things. So if that is you know, what they say, that is absolutely um, bordering on basically buying favours and buying compliance. Well, it sounds like it's a bribe, isn't it? It does, yeah. I think it's a. I think it feels very much like a bribe, and um, I just think that you know you've got a whole mess, and it's not as as um, let's say difficult to split up like that in the South Island. In the North Island, it's a hell of a mess. Uh, with well over 100 iwi and um, three local uh, water authorities. So who, how, how does that work? And secondly, this is part of the Hapuapua concept of co-governance between Māori and the Crown, which is represented by the government, and everyone else doesn't get a look in. Now, it's interesting you bring that up because many could argue, though, that this could be seen as a good thing, an equality measure to make sure that Māori are on an even footing with Pākehā. That's what the academics say. Are they wrong? Well, they're just b b basically bonkers, really, aren't they? I mean, clearly, this is about redistribution of assets in New Zealand uh, based on ethnicity and a radical interpretation of the Treaty of Waitangi. I mean, the government is going down this radical, um, this, this radical road, and they didn't bring, tell the people what they were wanting to do before the election, and they're only starting to tell the people now in dribs and drabs after the election when they've got a majority, and as far as they're concerned, the people don't get a voice. That's the government gets the voice, and so do Iwi. And now, frankly, that is not democracy. Not democracy the way we know it, Chris, and not democracy anywhere. I've got to turn our attention to the hate speech legislation, those laws which have got off to a rather shaky start. <laughs> You've put out a statement earlier this week saying that National would scrap any such laws. Of course, this is all based on the March 15th Christchurch terror attacks. Why would you scrap legislation that hasn't even passed yet? What's your main concern? Well, it's quite clear that uh, they're just using, the government is using the Christchurch terror attacks as a, a, a reason to bring in hate speech legislation when actually they should be encouraging debate, they should be encouraging uh, liberal democracy requires people to be able to have different views and to be able to voice those views. Uh, we already, and I saw the Prime Minister totally either disingenuously or just completely unprepared state that the hate speech laws were about criminalising incitement to violence, when incitement to violence is already a crime in New Zealand and has been uh, successfully prosecuted. So I have no, no idea about why she just made that up. Uh, unless she just doesn't know. Now, I've been questioning her about this in Parliament, and we ended up with her, you know, insulting me yesterday. Um, but, you know, basically it's it's obviously something she doesn't want to back down on, but she's not even sure what it is she doesn't want to back down on. So I think she just needs to, you know, 
calm down, read what she's putting out, and think about that very carefully. Is that conducive to a a fundamentally liberal democracy where people have the right to say what they think? Proponents of this legislation, though, would argue that hate speech laws protect minority groups in New Zealand. Well, they clearly don't, do they? I mean, how seriously would shutting down debate about religion, for instance, or anything else, have stopped an Australian murdering gunman coming to New Zealand for the express purpose of killing a whole bunch of people at a mosque or two mosques? The fact is, that wouldn't have. It is simply an opportunistic power grab by the government, and it's about shutting down free speech. If you look at the cabinet paper that the government has um, produced, that has now, they've said, they're not going to consider political discourse as being covered by this um, law that they want to bring in. And yet the 36-page document that's on the Ministry of Justice website does not make that clear at all. So we're going to have women who want to say that they need to have, um, you know, this discussions about uh, whether or not they should have women-only spaces or anything suddenly shut down. We saw this cancel culture with Don Brash being cancelled out of Mass University when he wanted to speak about uh, the future of the country, and he was, you know basically told he was some some form of um, almost, at least put it in you know, colloquial terms, a devil worshipper uh, for thinking that one stand of citizenship uh, was a good thing. We are absolutely on this track unless we stop it now and we will cancel the cancellation. Some commentators have looked at the legislation and said that still there is a high threshold for any type of prosecution and nothing much has changed other than the Human Rights Act. Well, they're wrong. There's plenty of other commentators have looked at it and said exactly what I'm saying. This is a, you know, we don't have a problem with having protected people based on their, um, I don't know, age or something. I mean, but this is getting ridiculous. They're now talking about what they've got proposing is a three-year prison sentence or a $50,000 fine. As an adult's assault on a child has a, carries a maximum sentence of two years in prison. And so this is actually about shutting down debate. We've seen it around New Zealand with councils uh, Christchurch Council was one of them, Palmerston North another, uh, shutting down debate in libraries and elsewhere, in public places paid for by ratepayers because they've decided that somebody might be offended. Well, free speech re means that sometimes people are going to be offended. They are going to be insulted, uh, but the, the corollary of that is, is that they get to have their say as well. I want to discuss a big local issue here in Christchurch, Judith Collins, and that is parking. It sounds frivolous, but believe you me, it's not. With council increasing on-street parking charges by as much as 45%, saying the need to do so to keep in line with other councils, like in Wellington and Auckland. Once again, local businesses are accusing the council of this anti-car agenda, which appears to be the case. What's your reaction to that? Look, everywhere we go, we are getting from every council that calls itself, you know, as a city, like Christchurch and Dunedin, Auckland, Wellington, Hamilton, we're getting this anti-car rhetoric coming from people who don't have to take kids to school, who don't have to go and pick up their own groceries, who don't have to do multiple jobs uh, during the day. They just live in another world. And most people have to multitask, do all sorts of things. They don't just go to work on their bike and then come home again. It's just ridiculous what is happening um, around councils and cities in particular where they just don't live like most people do and they have no respect for people who can't uh, get parking, for instance, for cars. When I was last in Christchurch, I was met with some people who had been victims um, from the Christchurch earthquakes, and some of those people were still, I mean, seriously injured. And as they said to me, even getting parking for the disabled car parking 
is very hard and Christchurch Council doesn't do enough to make it easy for people to be able to get around. Not everybody is fit, healthy and able to bike everywhere. It is part of an environmental agenda, isn't it? It's part of an environmental movement to make us change our modes of transport. Um, is that such a bad thing? Well, we are big supporters of the environment and conservative parties generally are because we're about conserving. Um, but we're also about giving people choices and understanding that, you know, just because someone's been to Amsterdam and they've been very excited they can cycle around everywhere, we are not Amsterdam. Now, we live in cities where we have quite a lot of sprawl, but also one of the reasons people come and live in New Zealand or choose to live in New Zealand is to be able to have some space around them. So if everyone's living in apartments in the city, well, you know, cars are not quite as important. But they also want to be able to get out places too. And you think about our population, with 5 million people, the South Island's only got what, about 800,000 people, and they're trying to bring in big city ideas, you know, where like Melbourne or the New uh, New York, for instance, what they've got eight billion mate, sorry, eight million people, I should say, um, in one place, and you know these sorts of public transport issues work really well there. But buses, uh, trams, all those sorts of things are great in Christchurch. Cycleways are great; people like to cycle, but not everybody can all the time.